Broadcasting live in Atlanta, Georgia. This, this is the Sports Chalk Show with Wayne Gandy. You may fill me up, fill me up, yeah. Can you fill me up, yeah? You won't break me down. I've come too far, I've come too far, yeah, yeah. I've come too far, yeah. So just throw me in the towel. Hey, 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 hey. It's a new day. I'm a, I'm a do it. Yeah, I'm gonna go all the way. You Welcome to Sports Shock Show. I'm the Sports Shock Wayne Gandy. Good morning to you. Happy Valentine's Day to all you people that are going to celebrate it and pay four times much for those roses than they actually are worth. Um, be, be, you know, what happened to the 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 ice uh, sickle stick in the box? You know, let's make one of them macaroni boxes and and give her that. Like a homemade car. Don't know. That's what my daughter. Three hundred dollars for some roses. This is my a- wife and daughter actually got homemade cars. This <laughs> now it was from a piece a, of white paper. <laughs> well, no, it was printed from the computer <laughs> with the colors and and the graphics. But it, you know, come on, man. You know, we just went through Christmas. My daughter just had a birthday on the fifth of this month, right. and my wife's birthday is in about a week. Uh, Give me a break. Give you a break on the wallet. <laughs> well, we, as we always do on Tuesday, we talk to athletic director for Savannah State, Mr. Sterling Stewart. Good morning to you, Sterling. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. How are you? Oh, we're doing great. Uh, so you and the wife got the penthouse suite at uh, the Four Seasons? What, what are y'all doing tonight for Valentine's Day? Uh, that would be a negative. Uh, I am single, and no, I'm not doing anything <laughs> for Valentine's Day. <laughs> Uh, he cleared that up quick, didn't he? And let me tell you something. Uh, knowing him uh, now close to uh, 30 years, uh, very, very frugal. This is a man who will re-gift a food item. Hey, uh, happy birthday. You get a cheeseburger. Is that a cheeseburger from last year? Hey, It's the thought that counts. Well, Sterling uh, Temple has hired the first – what they're calling swag coordinator to college football. Um, is this going to be a growing thing, someone that colleges are hiring basically to set up and showcase uh, graphic designs on social media? Is this a new position that they're starting? Well, I I would hope so uh, because it gives uh, uh, people of color opportunities on a majority level where we didn't have it before. Um, and for what one reason or another, um, what we do is not valued as much as it should be uh, throughout uh, our industry on the collegiate level. And so um, anytime you can get your foot in the door and showcase your talent, I think it's um, admirable. And the thing is, we just the, the person who's hired, uh, unfortunately, uh, carries the, the burden of all minorities are people of color and they have to succeed because if they don't then they'd be like oh well we gave it a try and then we keep it moving so i just i, I hope it would I, I truly hope it would a- explain this to me a swag coordinator swag meaning make us more cool make us more urban what yeah, is the to, purpose to learn a person that knows i guess the social media lingo you right, know to right. be right. able to right connect with the well, recruits and stuff and like the that young people on the social media level. Okay. Now well, it's, it's all, it's all of that, Kenny. It would be all of that. Um, because again, as you know, as you get older, there's more of a disconnect with, with a younger generation. And so you need someone to help bridge that gap. And with recruiting now, uh, you, the more you connect, uh, on their level, the, the better, the, the better perceived opportunity you have to recruit some of the, the marquee talent to your place. And the reason I ask is because you mentioned it's a great opportunity for uh, minorities. Isn't it possible that some of this disconnect could be just a generational disconnect and not a racial disconnect? Well, it, here's what we do in our country. I think we try to point a finger or, or identify one segment of a problem instead of looking at all the layers of a problem. And it is, I mean, because there's multi layers to this. Um, it's racial, it's uh, socioeconomic status, 
I mean, it's, it's a lot of different things why we don't have the connect. I mean, if you, if you remember Wayne and, and Kenny, when we were much younger, you had, if you want to be accepted, you had to have a clean face, no hair on your face. If you wore a beard or had a goatee, you were kind of an outcast. And, and now it's more accepted because mainstream uh, individuals are wearing it and it's, it's more in public eye. So it, it's, it, it's in our country, I, my personal opinion, I believe that we try to identify one segment and try to fix that and then say the problem is fixed, as opposed to looking at the, the problem realistically and saying, hey, um, there are so many different facets or so many different moving parts. We have to fix one at a time. And we got to keep it moving. We can't say one thing is fixed and now the whole thing is fixed. Now, when it goes, comes to social media and recruiting, we've seen uh, some coaches uh, find themselves in, in trouble. Is it, is, it mm-hmm. an, uh, is it FaceTime? Is it how many times I go on your Twitter page? What, how, what kind of rules and regulations are we dealing with with trying to get someone uh, recruited <sighs> through social media? Wayne, part of the problem is that um, every time they come up with a rule, someone else skirts the rule, and then they revamp the rule again. Okay. Um, personally, for me, um, and, and, and that means the, the, the rich continue to get rich because they have the resources to skirt the rule and to still, and to still get their message across, where the smaller schools, if you don't have the resources to do that, then you, you have to play by those rules. For me personally, um, for, uh, for what recruits, I would like to see, you know, you contact the kid one time a week. Um, and because what we fail to realize, those kids are still in school. Those kids still have to meet a standard and have to graduate. And you're asking a young person who hasn't fully matured mentally yet to be bombarded with all of this attention. Something is going to fall by the wayside. That kid is not focusing on uh, calculus or college algebra or, or social studies or whatever they have to, whatever core uh, or class that, that they're in, they're not completely focused on that because they're reading the letters. I mean, you, you can't tell me a 17-year-old who's getting a letter from Alabama, Clemson, Penn State, and getting calls and getting bombarded every day. They're not I- I- indulging in, in embracing that. And something is being left out, which traditionally is, you know, is probably their, their grade. So I think we should, I think we should scale back and 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 deal with uh, limited contact with with students, because again, they are students first. And the more you put in front of them, uh, the more they're going to be inclined or tempted to take that on. It's like it's like you walk a, a little kid into the candy shop and say, okay, go at it, and, and then expect that kid to govern themselves. That's impossible. They can't do that. Uh, one question I wanted to ask you about between the difference between the city police and the campus police, in a case like Joe Mixon, the running back over at Oklahoma, and all the information that got out, um, in a case uh, that happened on campus, uh, is, is not the same protection offered as far as um, keeping that student in that case on campus, or is it something that is totally open to public and, and regular police? Well, it depends on where it happens, and it depends on the municipality. Okay. Um, if, the, if the municipality has judici- ju- jurisdiction over the school, and that's something that each uh, community kind of uh, governs themselves, then uh, the, the leading entity or the leading agency would, would be the lead for the judgment. Uh, or what to do. Uh, but in all cases, the DA would be involved or have to be com- uh, contacted and would render some sort of judgment as to moving forward. Um, again, uh, the thing with Mr. Nixon was that uh, it was a despicable act, but I, I thought both individuals should have been charged with felony bat- battery because they they were engaged. Mm-hmm. It wasn't like he just walked up and he, he smacked us. Uh, they both engaged in, in the confrontation. So both of them should have served uh, or should have been charged with, with some sort of crime. Um, and I just think uh, the people with Mr. Nixon's uh, side didn't push hard enough 
um, because they reduced his his charge to simple uh, um, a, a simple battery, which was a misdemeanor, which therefore only the DA had the choice to charge whoever they wanted. And, and I would have personally, if I was the the kid's father or in the kid's corner, I'd have pushed for the the felony for both. Or we're going to drop it for both, because once I saw the tape, then to me that was uh, both individuals were at fault, as opposed to just one. All right, Sterling, thank you for calling in and helping us with the show, and we'll talk to you next week. All right, thank you. Good, happy Valentine's Day, guys, and uh, go spend that money, Kenny. Hey, don't get <laughs> you know better than that, boy. Savannah State Athletic Director Sterling Stewart. Uh, I asked that last question just stemming from. It, it seems like no protection at all of Joe Mixon's rights at all have been enforced at all. Like he, right. literally, it comes off as though he was walking down the street, saw somebody, and just jumped, and on. just jumped on. We'll be back with more of the Sports Shock Show right after this. Go away. More of the Sports Jock Show with Wayne Gandy is coming up next. Wake up to Atlanta's new.